Welcome to Yellowstone National Park, one of the most unique parks in the country. Located in northwest Wyoming and just north of Jackson Hole in the Tetons, Yellowstone is home to Grand Prismatic Spring. Also home to Old Faithful, Yellowstone is the country's oldest national park with over 3 million visitors every single year. And to me, it feels like the majority of people congregate to a few locations in the park, but this park has so much more to offer than the hotspots. So in this video, I want to share my favorite locations, hikes, and more. This video will be a comprehensive travel guide to help you plan your visit. Really quick though, if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel it would mean the world to me but without further ado let's dive right in this is my top 15 places to visit in Yellowstone National Park First up is going to be Black Sand Basin. Bree and I witnessed one of the most amazing sunsets of our lives here. Black Sand Basin is roughly a one mile drive northwest of Old Faithful Geyser along the main park road. The basin was named for its sand derived from obsidian, which is a black volcanic glass. After parking, to see every geothermal feature here, it's only going to be a half mile hike with little to no elevation gain. You'll be walking along more or less paved boardwalks, and you'll notice that a lot of the walkways in the park are these boardwalks. The most famous geothermal feature in Black Sand Basin is Emerald pool, but you'll also get to see handkerchief pool, sunset lake, rainbow pool, opalescent pool, whistle geyser, and a few others. In this video, I'm going to share a few names of the many hot springs, geysers, and geothermal features. However, there are more than 10,000 hydrothermal features in Yellowstone, so I'll do my best to just share the best ones to see at every single destination and basin. Next up at number two is going to be Biscuit Basin, which is a 1.8 mile drive north of Black Sand Basin. This is another relatively quick and easy stop where you'll only be walking three quarters of a mile here to see all of the geothermal features. In Biscuit Basin, the number one thing to see here is Sapphire Pool. This pool is unbelievable and has some of the most rich aqua blue colors in the park. Just seeing this one pool alone is worth the stop. On this trail, you can also find Black Opal Spring, Black Diamond Pool, and Black Pearl Geyser, among a handful of others. At number three, we have Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, which is not a geothermal geyser, but it's one of the most iconic places in the entire park. It consists of two waterfalls and the canyon itself, with the upper falls dropping over 100 feet into the river below and the lower falls dropping 300 feet. The large rocks upstream are remnants of lava flow and the colorful rocks are from hydrothermally altered sediments. There are many ways to see the waterfall and canyon. There's going to be two main roads connected by a driving bridge. There's viewpoints on North Rim Drive and South Rim Drive. My favorite place here is Lookout Point, which is just a short few hundred foot walk from your car but there's also a short and steep hike that will take you down a few sets of stairs to get a more eye level view of the waterfall on north rim side you can also hike to the brink of lower falls take a roadside stop at grand viewer inspiration point and then on the south rim you can hike to artist point or see the falls from upper falls view Next up is Norris Geyser Basin. This is a very underrated spot in the park. It's multiple basins in one height, so you get quite the bang for your buck here. Once you park, you'll be in a relatively central location to the basin, and you'll have a few options where to go with walkways in a few different directions, but mainly north and south. The north end is called Porcelain Basin, and the south end is called Back Basin. There are gonna be four hike options to do in Norris Geyser. The shortest is Porcelain Basin Trail, which is 0.9 miles with roughly 100 feet of elevation gain. The next hike is Norris Geyser Basin Trail, which is 1.8 miles and then there's the back basin trail but this is 2.6 miles so at this point you might as well do the fourth and longest trail which is the Norris Geyser Basin complete loop trail and that's 2.9 miles with just under 200 feet of elevation gain. So you're going to see countless geothermal geysers and pools. Some of my favorites include Steamboat Geyser, Crackling Lake, Blue Geyser and my favorite Emerald Spring. At number five, we have Grand Prismatic Spring in Midway Geyser Basin. But you're really coming here for one reason, and that's Grand Prismatic, the main event of Yellowstone. There are a few ways to see Grand Prismatic Spring that we will see in this video, but the first is hiking the boardwalk. The trail out to the springs is 0.7 miles with 50-ish feet of elevation gain, where you will also get to see Excelsior Geyser, Opal Pool, and Turquoise Pool. And for Grand Prismatic, it is the largest hot spring in the United States, the third largest in the world after Frying Pan Lake in New Zealand and Boiling Lake in Dominica. The spring is known for its rich deep blue color in the center of the spring, followed by all of the colors of the rainbow. It's an unbelievable sight and really looks like it could be the heart of our planet. This is one of the main reasons you probably wanted to come to Yellowstone after seeing photos of this, but don't forget to enjoy the other pools and geysers in Midway Geyser Basin because they're all stunning. 
The second way to see Grand Prismatic is by hiking the Fairy Falls Trail to Grand Prismatic Overlook, which is a 1.5 mile round trip hike with 200 feet of elevation gain. It's mostly a flat hike until the last tenth of a mile or so, where you will hike uphill and then reach the actual lookout. Grand Prismatic is maybe less than 500 feet in the distance, but from here you get a beautiful aerial view of the spring and the basin as a whole. From the higher vantage point, you'll also notice the colors of the spring are much more rich and deep. So for anyone wanting a unique view of Grand Prismatic, I highly recommend this hike. The third and last, and maybe the best way to see Grand Prismatic, is by taking a scenic flight from Jackson where you get to fly right over this beautiful piece of mother nature. Bree and I took this scenic flight maybe five years ago, so I'm sure the price has changed and increased, but it was well worth it, and I remember it wasn't too, too expensive, maybe $300 for the two of us, but again, that has likely changed since we took this flight. And we actually ended up taking two flights, one around the Tetons during sunrise and a second in the afternoon above Grand Prismatic. Even when you're flying, it's a long ride to the way to Yellowstone, but the entire way is stunning. So if you're staying in West or North Yellowstone, the Jackson Airport will be quite the drive, so you'll have to decide if it works out logistically for your trip. But if you're also visiting the Tetons, then you should absolutely add this to your itinerary because the airport is right there. After the variety of ways to see Grand Prismatic, we're going to head to Gibbons Falls for number 8. This is a really cool waterfall in the park and a quick stop, so you definitely need to see it. Gibbons Falls can be seen just a few feet away from the parking lot. It's a wide, low sloping waterfall that seems like it just goes on forever, almost like a mix of whitewater rapids and a large waterfall. The waterfall itself drops 84 feet in total to the river floor below, and if you'd like to get a walk in, you can walk along the paved walkways to get different vantage points of the waterfall. This hike is just going to be a half of a mile out and back with around 50 feet of elevation gain. And the paved walkways here make this a very accessible destination in the park. Next up, we have Yellowstone Lake, which is the biggest lake in the park. It's a great place for boating and fishing. You can hike along the lake, see the lake behind geysers at West Thumb, or take a scenic drive along the north side of the lake on Highway 20. The lake is more than 7,500 feet above sea level, so you may feel the altitude. With the lake being higher than 7,000 feet, it actually makes this the largest high elevation lake in North America. The lake also has the largest population of wild cutthroat trout in North America, so it's a great place for fishing and really just an amazing lake with so many different ways to enjoy it. I also really like that it's an easy place to visit where there's no hiking involved unless you want there to be, so it's another quick stop on your trip. At number 10, we have Lower Geyser Basin and Fountain Paint Pots. This is a great stop in the center of the park, right off of Grand Loop Road. To hike the entire boardwalk here, it's gonna be just over half a mile round trip, and it's mostly flat. Every time I've been to this basin, there's always been so much steam, and some of the geysers are very colorful, and it's a great place to catch sunset. And there's a lot of dead trees here, which always kind of gives a spooky feel to this spot. Aside from the Fountain Paint Pots, in Lower Geyser Basin, you will also see Leather Pool, Celestine Pool, Jet Geyser, Fountain Geyser, and a few more. Like a lot of the other basins, this is a relatively easy and quick stop and accessible to most. You'll see hot springs and geysers here like most of the other basins, but this is unique because additionally there's geothermal features with limited water, which not every basin has. So these are going to be seen in the form of mud pots and this other word right here that I'll put on screen because I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this because I know I'm just going to get roasted in the comments. This will be more of an activity than a destination. Seeing Yellowstone's wildlife is one of the most amazing things about this park. It's not something you can necessarily plan for and certainly not something you should actively try to find. However, you are almost guaranteed to see wildlife at some point. Most of the time, it's always been bison or buffalo, but we have also seen bears and even wolves in the distance. So keep an eye out while you drive because you may encounter elk, mule deer, moose, bighorn sheep, and so much more. While driving, if you do see any wildlife, please, please, please stay in your vehicle. Do not get out of your car, do not feed wildlife, do not approach any animals. On one hand, if you disobey these rules, these animals may end up getting killed for safety reasons. And secondly, as I'm sure you've seen in the news more than once, if you get too close to wildlife, you could get absolutely trucked 20 feet into the air, and this can even be deadly. So please keep your distance. 
At number 12, we have West Thumb Geyser Basin, which is just above the western side of Yellowstone Lake. And in my opinion, this is my favorite vantage point to also see Yellowstone Lake because the geysers are just a few feet from the lake, so it almost looks like a natural geothermal infinity pool. The walkway is one mile round trip with just around 50 feet of elevation gain. We actually did encounter some wildlife and we made sure to keep as much distance as possible. This is never an ideal situation to be in, but so long as you stay alert and slowly create more distance between you and them, you're doing your part, and thankfully it wasn't a buffalo. A few of the geysers and pools you'll want to make sure to see here are Black Pool, Abyss Pool, Thumb Paint Pots, and Thumb Geyser. And I'd like to note that there were bugs everywhere, so make sure you're smarter than us and pack bug spray for them. Next up is Moose Falls, which is a five minute walk from the road and it's a great place for landscape photography and long experience exposure photography. The waterfall is roughly 30 feet tall and it's pretty powerful. There's vantage points on top of the waterfall, on the side of it, and the bottom of it. I recommend going to all of them but make sure to not get too close to the edge because the fall here would not be fun. You're only going to need maybe 30 minutes to enjoy the falls, even less if you're not doing any photography. You can also see a bridge here that's immersed in the trees and it's above the river which is pretty cool. Moose Falls is located just a mile north of the south entrance of the park so if you're staying in North Yellowstone or West Yellowstone this will be quite the mission to get here. Here, but if you're going to Yellowstone from Jackson or the Tetons, this will be right on the side of the road and not a detour at all. At number 14, we have Old Faithful. Old Faithful Geyser was discovered in 1870, and then it became a national park in 1872. And since then, it has had more than 1 million eruptions. The eruption intervals are slightly different, but it's typically between one and two hours, with the height of the eruption ranging from 100 to 200 feet, and the eruptions typically last one to five minutes. This is the most commercial section of the park. You will also find the Old Faithful Lodge, other lodges and accommodations, massive parking lots, shuttle stations, gift shops, restaurants, and so on. So when visiting Old Faithful, get ready for the crowds. There's also plenty of hikes and walkways here, so there's plenty of other things to do and see here. Lastly, at number 15, we have Mammoth Hot Springs in the northern section of Yellowstone. I've been here two or three times. Sometimes there's been a lot of steam and water, but the most recent time it seemed pretty dry. This may have just been different times of year, but it's worth noting. Mammoth Hot Springs is a large area of hot springs and travertine pools on a hillside, with most of the colors being different hues of white and orange. You can park at and see the upper terrace or lower terrace. There's plenty of walkways, staircases, and a few hikes you can do here. If you'd like to see everything, that hike will be 2.2 miles round trip with about 300 feet of elevation gain, most of which will be on staircases on the boardwalk. If you have time, I'd recommend walking the entire 2.2 miles, but if you're tight on time, my preference is the lower terrace. I'd like to add one more location as a bonus, and that's Rustic Falls. If you're driving to or from Mammoth Hot Springs, it's on the side of the road and worth the five minute stop. Compared to the other waterfalls in the park, it's my least favorite, but nonetheless, it's still beautiful and worth seeing. And with that, that's gonna wrap up this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned about some new locations to visit in the park. Like I mentioned, most people that flock here seem like it's for Grand Prismatic, Old Faithful, or the wildlife, but there's so much more to Yellowstone. Anyways, if you haven't already, it would mean the world to me if you could give this video a thumbs up, comment below your favorite place in the video, and subscribe to the channel. I have dozens of other top tens, travel guides, and hiking vlogs on the channel that you may like if you enjoyed this, but that's it. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching.